Thank you, thank you, thank you for that. I appreciate that, and thank you for giving, cutting me a little, like, giving me my space to figure this out. And you deserve to be able to read more as well, because I know I run this open mic. You, because you are running the Zoom meeting, this wouldn't exist exist without you, because I'd been too cheap. When I started it, everything is perfect. All is wonderful. I'll do the last three, and I will thank you excessively. And I also think it's kind of weird. Everybody's in a, in a in their library and I'm sitting here with beer at a bar and I'm like give me a side room and I'll and I'll perform stuff for you guys. In this last round I normally would read things from a, a Scars Publications collection book and I said I'm not going to do that this time because I've been reading stuff from uh, Testament, the most recent book, so much. And by the way, I remember John saying, oh, what if you actually buy my book? Which is harder now. I go to open mics and I'm like, uh, buy this book, but no, it's actually 20 bucks. <laughs> um, but I thought I would read for this one once. I haven't shared with you guys from the older book from them, The Shattering the Glass Ceiling. And these are three from different sections within the book. And I, because I haven't shared them with you, I thought I would. And I hope you like them. Um, they're from, as I said, different sections. This first one is called A Woman talking about her rapist friend. He was my friend, and we had been through a lot together, our physical ups and downs, but I'm he- I'm for evening, so we'll transfer you to Anne. Perfect, perfect, okay. thank you. Okay. She was Sorry, floor here. All right, all right, yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> he was my friend, and we had our, we'd been through our, a lot together, our uh, psychological ups and downs, and he mixed drinks exceptionally well at his college frat parties, and his ice blue eyes always spoke the truth to me. It's amazing to think that the only reason we ever met was because one day he wore a turtleneck that perfectly matched his eyes and I had to tell him. <laughs> I don't know why he put up with my mood swings, with my self-destructive social life, the man-hating, and normally he didn't care about women and never gave their opinions much thought. He, he tried to get them drunk at parties. Maybe, maybe he knew that and that's why he listened to me. Then a few, for a few years, our friendship drifted. We, we didn't see each other much. I, I heard through the grapevine that he was failing in school. And then one day, out of the blue, he comes over and he has two black eyes. And he says to me that he was in the parking garage and two guys came up to him and beat him up. And one of them said, you raped my girlfriend. And then he looked at me and he said, and you know, looking back, he was right. I raped her. And I know he wanted sympathy. He, he wanted to hear me say something, but I couldn't. <laughs> and he said, I, I know this has to be hard for you to hear, but I wanted to tell you. I know it was wrong. A part of me wanted to hate him. A part of me thought that if he was my friend, I would be condoning what he did. A part of me thought that our friendship made him realize what he had done. I tried to be there for him. I wasn't much good at it. Eventually, he moved away. I, I, I didn't try to lose touch with him, but it's just that a part of me is still trying to figure out if I can be his friend. Sometimes, you just lose touch with someone. Sometimes that's all you can do. One of the stories within it, and on a totally personal note, he is my friend, we had less touch, but then he managed to get in touch with me and said that he was living in China. And so I said, hey, buddy, would you like somebody to visit? And so we went to China and had a tour guide and it was, you know, interesting, but you know, lots of chains about people over decades and realizations of things, which I cover in other parts of other books as well, but um, this one is a, another piece from Shattering the Glass Ceiling. It's, actu it's actually also in a, a, a a poem for every uh, element, every uh, event of the year, calendar listing. This is one of them on Equal Pay Day, and it's also in this book, and it's called Emphatic One. After working so hard and doing so well at work, I couldn't take my low pay anymore. I knew that I, 
I'm gonna need to charge the battery while I'm at it. I knew it was wrong when it wasn't fair, but I had to do something about it. So I took a deep breath and I came up in a meeting with my boss, the owner of the company. I don't think he knew what this meeting was really about. So I started my speech. Uh, no, it wasn't actually a speech. It was more like a conversation, an emphatic one at that. And when I explained at, at this company that I do the work of two people, I think he thought that I was going to want to have double the pay. And really, I don't make much, but I didn't think I want to lose my job over asking for so much of a raise. So after I talked and after I reasoned and after he may have realized that nobody else could have done all this work for that pay by the deadline and do it well, that he knew suddenly paying me reasonably seemed reasonable. <laughs> But uphill battles for us women are the norm. You may want to think that when it comes to it, working hard, women could earn the pay that they deserve. But here's the news flash. We women work harder than men for less pay, less than equal pay, and it shouldn't be that way. And we should still at least be happy. <laughs> we should be happy that we've even got a job. I mean, what are those women even complaining about when they're supposed to take care of the house and raise the babies and men anyway? And don't forget that's after taking a man's name too because women can claim nothing for themselves anymore but the one thing I learned is to take the reins and try to win each and every battle only so that women can be treated as equals it's just a shame that each woman has to take this fight on because just because one woman does well that doesn't mean women of all it doesn't mean that all of mankind Yes, you heard me. Mankind will make the connection that rights to one woman may actually mean rights for all women. So, I know it's an uphill battle, but I just want you to know that I'm always in your corner. I'm insanely low on battery power, so I'm going to be really quick and then go out on this one on a really short one that is in this book, Shattering the Glass Ceiling. Dun, dun, dun. Backside, front side. This is called Quenching Anyone's Thirst. How do you respond when someone calls you a tall drink of water. I mean, I'm just trying to do my job and I really have no intention of quenching anybody's thirst. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, my battery's about to die on this guy for the Zoom meeting, you guys. Thank you so much. I'm gonna set up a Zoom meeting for the beginning of August, you guys. You guys are triple plus awesome. I'm a